Joining us now, Republican Congressman from Colorado, Ken Buck. Congressman, I know Emmer has been on your bingo card for a while. You voted for him multiple times. Do you see him flipping enough votes to actually get the gavel? I, I think it became more difficult recently. Um, I, and when I say recently, within the last half hour, hmm. uh, President Trump uh, uh, posted something on his uh, social media account um, that uh, was encouraging people not to support Tom Emmer. In a, in a race that you can't afford to lose more than four votes, I think that could be uh, damaging. Um, I think Tom is doing his best to uh, talk to each of the people who uh, have questions about him and try to uh, deal with those questions. But I, I think he's got some hurdles to overcome at this point. What is going on with your party that a person who does the constitutional thing by certifying a vote that, that somebody won fair and square can't be the speaker? Well, I'll tell you, I certified the vote also. I don't want to be speaker, but I, I do think that Tom has done the right thing consistently. He is one of those folks that is very honest, very forthright, um, and I thought he would have a really good chance because of that, because you know exactly where he stands on, on every issue. Um, but uh, it is the way it is right now. We have to overcome this, this issue. Um, okay, so if it can't be Emmer, can't be Scalise, can't be Jordan, can't be McCarthy, who can it be? It can't be Buck, but it can be uh, perhaps Mike Johnson, perhaps Byron Donalds. Uh, there were a number of people on the ballot today that, that did well. Uh, Tom did the best. We'll see. We'll see if Tom uh, uh, is able to get the votes. I, I just don't know that he can. But I, I think we go uh, back to the drawing drawing board and, and figure out who the next person up is and then give that person the chance to talk to his, uh, folks that are opposing. Are you confident that come 13 working days from now, the government will stay open, that there will be a speaker to put legislation to the floor. I am confident of that. And, and before 13 days from now, I'm, what I'm confident of is that we will either elect a speaker like Tom Emmer, and, and Tom certainly has my support, or we will elect somebody uh, with a, on a temporary basis to make sure we get through this, this period where we have to deal with a potential government shutdown, where we have to deal with a potential uh, uh, bill uh, coming over from the Senate involving Ukraine, Israel, uh, border security, uh, Pacific Rim, uh, supplemental funding. Um, what makes you so confident? Because so far we've seen nothing that lends to this actually getting resolved. I mean, we keep seeing failed votes. We keep seeing these nominees who get a, a broad uh, number of Republicans, but still fall well short of the number of Republicans they need. There, there seems to be a hold, a group of holdouts in your party, and you were once one of them for, for McCarthy, that just refuse to go on to get along. Uh, absolutely. Um, so I don't know if there are a group of people who are going to block Tom Emmer so that they get their choice. Um, I don't know. The, the reason that I'm optimistic is because I'm optimistic. I'm a half, uh, a glass half full kind of guy. And I just believe I, two weeks ago, I told everybody that I thought within the end of at the end of that week, we were going to have a speaker. So I haven't been accurate, but I have been optimistic. Uh, let me ask you about the things that need to get done. Other than funding, there's this uh, package that the, the White House is sending to Congress. They want aid for both Ukraine and for Israel. That is going to be stalled because there's nobody to put it to the floor. What do you make of, of the delay for, for those two things? Well, first, I think it can go to the Senate. The Senate can deal with it. I, I personally uh, have, I am supportive of aid to Ukraine, supportive of aid to Israel. The question I have is if there are some pay-fors in that aid. Will President Biden agree to reduce the number of uh, IRS agents from 87,000 down to a, a number so we can help pay for that aid? Will, will we uh, reduce the number of electric vehicle recharging stations paid for by the federal government so we can pay for some of that aid? I want to see the pay-fors um, and, and, and move forward. But certainly we need a speaker to do that. I think by the time the Senate finishes with this, we'll have a speaker. Well, let me ask you this. I know you're, you're interested in what um, uh, French President Emmanuel Macron said today regarding what should happen next in Gaza. You're on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. He's talking about uh, convening an international community to figure out what, will, what should happen um, to Gaza and what should replace Hamas. What do you think of that? I don't think the French have any business in this, and, and frankly, um, I, I don't pay much attention to Macron. He was willing to sell Ukraine down the road. Um, I think that uh, Israel is going to take care of this issue, and, and we would uh, be wise to support Israel in how they uh, proceed. So you do not think there should be an international community to go in and help set up a government? Do you think that, that Israel has the authority to, to help Gaza 
lead itself, that Gazans would accept that? I think that Israel, when they are finished with their military operation and there is not a military threat to Israel, then I think Israel can call for a uh, international uh, tribunal, the UN or some other group, uh, to come in and help. But at this point, the uh, the focus is on the military operation, and we should not be distracted with some uh, ceasefire. Uh, international group or, or anything else. This is a military operation. Israel needs our support, and, and I am there to support them.